Good night, guys. Greetings. Debate recap. Nights one, nights two. It was messy boots, bitch. I'm going to wait for everybody to get in. But this was like, these last two nights was a lot. Um, we had the CNN Democratic debates and it was a lot. I, I, I can't even front. Like the shit was exhausting both nights. Um, I think night two was a little bit more spirited. Um, but it was a lot tonight. Um, what's going on, Linda? How you feeling? Cullen's here. Hi, Cullen. Uh, Shannon, Orlando, how you doing? I just came from Orlando. Xavier's here. I'm going to wait for a few more people to get in, but I'm not going to keep you guys long because I know it's late. Um, so CNN had their debates two nights, uh, Tuesday night, Wednesday night. Tuesday night, we had what Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren, Marianne Williamson. Um, who else was in that debate? Oh, my God. Oh, that means that's who stood out to me. God, who was the rest of those people? Jesus Christ. Uh, I'll have to Google it. But anyway, night two, we had um, Bernie Sanders, Kamala Harris, freaking Cory Booker, Andrew Yang, Julian Castro, Kirsten Gillibrand, Tulsi Gabbard, Jay Inslee, my husband, um, Bennett was in this one, de Blasio, who doesn't have a shot in hell, um, Tonight, the stars was out. Um, I will say this. Night one, it was clear. It was clear who, who won that debate and who was running that debate. It was clear night one belonged to Bernie, Elizabeth Warren, and I'm going to dare say Marianne Williamson. Marianne Williamson was the most Google candidate for the first night of the debate. Um, I think what she offers, yes, she's a little spacey. She's a little, she's, she's, she's something, but when she speaks, it reminds me of like having someone, a citizen on that stage asking a question or making a point. And that's what I love about Maria Williamson. Do I think she's going to actually get the nomination? Hell fucking no. It's not going to happen. I could be wrong, but bitch, I'm willing to rent, bet the rent money on that one. It's not going to happen. But I love her. Great lady. Beautiful gals. But it's not going to happen. Um, To me, I, I, I understand, like, first off, CNN, this shit was not random selection. I don't give a fuck how you try to spin it or how you try to explain it to me. It's no way in hell these candidates were chosen at random for these debates. It's just no goddamn way. You put Bernie and Elizabeth the same night, bitch, they basically the same candidate. Okay, if you look at their policies, how they even, the de debating style, um, point of view, it's the same, it's, it's the male and female version of the same platform. The difference is, Elizabeth Warren and, you know, the, the funny thing is, I thought the Native American shit and all that was going to kind of kill her a little bit. But we got to remember, it's a lot of race to run, okay? We haven't even gotten to who we decide that's going to actually get the Democratic nomination. And then they got a campaign and actually run the campaign against Donald Trump. So that really didn't hurt her. But I'm going to say this to me. Elizabeth, if I'm looking at Bernie and Elizabeth, I think Elizabeth Warren does a way better job at explaining her policy. She does a way better job of actually reeling everything in. Like, that bitch stays on task. She got a plan for every goddamn thing. She knows how to explain that plan so that the general public can understand what the fuck she's saying, which is so clear. But she can also get in the mud with you and do the debate thing. But she'll bring that shit the fuck back and be like, but bitch, I'm going to get with you. We going to key key. Okay. We going to key key. I'm going to play this game with you, bitch. I'm going to throw a few punches. But we going to reel this in and remind you why I'm here. 
And I think that that is, that bitch is ready for war. She, she's, she's ready. Elizabeth Warren is ready. Um, of course, Bernie is Bernie. Um, he's here to stay. He's going to be here for a while until we decide he's going to be here to the end. Those two are going to be a problem to the end. Okay, it, it, they, they, they're unshakable at this point as far as making it to to the convention when they decide who the nominee is going to be. Um, as far as the rest of the people, um, that first night, I honestly can't remember them, guys. And that's a problem. Um... I can't remember them. And it's, it's with 20 candidates. And I can honestly say, I, I can't remember them. They were outshined. They mocked the Bernie and Elizabeth. And I feel like they tag team. Bitch, I feel like they made a pact. They said, all right, sis, this is like the Hunger Games. Because it literally is with 20 candidates. We got to narrow this field down. Let's stick together. Elbow the shit out these bitches. Until they get down to like 10 or 8. Then you on your own. But they made sure that first night, not one time, and I, I watched closely, not one time did they clash, not one time did they even have a negative interaction with each other. Their, that whole first night was Bernie and Elizabeth versus everybody goddamn else, and they fucking slayed. And that's just facts, whether you like it or not. Now, one critique I had, and I feel like for night two, CNN, I'm not saying they saw my tweet, but maybe a lot of people had the same idea. But I feel like that first night, that debate actually gave me a headache, partially because of Bernie's yelling, but also, too, because they kept cutting them off so fast. Like, you can't ask, and I know politicians can be long-winded, they can do a lot, it, it can be very much. Um... Oh, yeah, Amy Chloe Bouchard was in that debate, too. It looks like she has a lace front on, but I know it's not, but it gives lace front. But anyway, um, but the thing is, they kept cutting them off, and you can't ask people such loaded questions and expect for them to answer it in 59 goddamn seconds. That's just not, that's just not, that's not realistic, and it's really not fair. So that debate, the first night, I actually was ready for that to be over. Like, I was like, when is this going to be over? Versus night two, bitch. So night two, this is where all the heavy hitters came the fuck out. This is why I say seeing in this shit was not random. Y'all playing this shit. So you got fucking Kamala. I finally said her name right the first time. Kamala. Biden next to each other. You already knew that was going to be a rematch, bitch. Andrew Yang, Julian Castro, Cory Booker, Kirsten Gillibrand, Tulsi Gabbard, who fucking snatched the wig tonight. Um, Jay Inslee, like I said, that's my husband. Bennett, um, and who else was in this one? Um, oh, de Blasio. Now, tonight was just buck all around. Tonight was just fucking buck. Between the audience chanting, number one, that first chant was about, I, I Googled it. The first chant when they they cut Mother Corey off, bitch. That ain't even had shit to do with him. That was about Bill de Blasio um, and the whole Eric Garner case where he has that, they talked about it tonight about that cop that he hasn't fired um, that they still have on the force that killed Eric Garner. Pretty much. So they were talking about that. But bitch, you were supposed to cut de Blasio off when he made his statement. Not cut off Mother Corey. They tried him. Okay? Then the second um, um, chanting, they was talking. I forget what the fuck they was talking about. They was talking about something else. But the, the audience was just buck. Okay? Now, I will say this. I think that the moderators, they must have took their hint, like I said, about cutting them off. Because they did let them talk and explain themselves um, a little bit more than night one. So I think they got that memo where they was like, hold the fuck up. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'll say this. If I'm going down the wrong, Kamala, you was on the ropes tonight, sis. You going to have to come back strong. You had a great first debate. So it's like round one, round two, bitch. Round three, bitch. You better deliver. 
Um, Tulsi Gabbard, even though it's something about her, maybe it's her military thing. I come from a military family, so I don't even think that's it. But maybe she's just so cold to me. It's something about her. And I don't want people to think, oh, a woman can't be strong. And I, I'm not saying that, bitch. I'm just saying she's a little bit cold for me. And there's something about her that just rubs me the wrong way. But she snatched Kamala's wig tonight, bitch. That was a scalping. I had to turn away. I, I, I had to turn away. Like bitch, it it was, it it was it was tough to watch, because it's nothing like a gag. Like that was a wig snatching, and it was like bitch, you just didn't see that coming. And the thing is, she didn't see that coming from her. I think she might have been ready for Biden to say that because she could counter with the race voting, and you can kind of use Biden's past record against him. But this Tulsi bitch. I mean, even though she's a no-name, but she pulled receipts. And when she got onto that death penalty shit where Kamala didn't let the evidence go through until the last minute that could have saved somebody from death row, I was like, child. I fell out in the pew. That was a church fallout. That was a church Sunday morning. That was giving boys in the hood. Oh, my God. Ricky shot in the middle of the street going to get cornmeal for the fish, bitch. That was a scalping. And the thing is, Kamala couldn't do nothing with it. You trumped the prosecutor, bitch. Kamala couldn't do nothing with it. She was quiet for the rest of the night. She never, Kamala Harris tonight never got her footing. Okay? She just, she just, like, tonight when she started reading Kamala Harris on her record, you know that Jennifer Lewis meme where she fall out with the church head? That was me. I was like, Kamala. And the thing is, here's the thing. Kamala Harris, well put together lady. I haven't publicly endorsed like my candidate yet, but I, I don't mind Kamala Harris. You know, I'm all about a, a, a woman moving forward, making a stain, black woman doing a thing. But her record is a little shoddy. And what I do like about Kamala is, even though I know she be full of shit sometimes, she still be, that shit, she make that shit sound so sincere. Like, I'll be like, bitch, I know you lie, but I believe you. You know, like, I be believing you. But that's what happens. You always got to be ready for the new girl. This is like show business. I, I, I've told y'all since we started this Secretary of Shade shit. Politics is like show business, bitch. This is... You got knocked down the steps tonight, Kamala. You got pushed down the steps, bitch. By the new girl. I'm just saying. Okay? Now, Joe Biden. Compared to his first debate performance, he did way better. Like, Joe was definitely drinking the dark liquor. He had some shots. He was juiced. He was pumped. Them crow's feet is still an issue. But fuck it. I don't want people like, oh my God, you're ageist. No, I'm not ages, bitch. I'm just saying, if you're going to pound on eight pounds of pancake, at least make sure the crow's feet is together, okay? It's an incomplete top. It's an incomplete lift, bitch. That's all I'm saying. But Joe definitely showed up. Um, Joe was given very much of uncle at cookout who the family trying to call out, and he like, fuck y'all bitches. I said what I said. I smacked the shit out of all y'all in here. That's what he was given tonight. Okay, that's what he was giving it at. Okay, bottom line of flat out, Joe was giving, I smacked the shit out you whore. That's what he was giving the whole time. Great performance for him. I'm sure his supporters and his donors are, are breathing a sigh of relief right now. Um, and, you know, he'll be good to go. Andrew Yang. Vast improvement from the first debate, bitch. Because you said all of seven words the last debate. Tonight, he's still pushing that $1,000 a month. He always get me with that shit. My issue with Andrew Yang, and I know the gang gang gonna love him, and I'm not opposed to him. 
But gang, I need more policy talk. See, this is where Elizabeth Warren, this is why I feel like Elizabeth Warren is the most complete candidate as far as it comes to these debates out of everyone is because she can tussle with you. Like I said, she can tussle with you. She can explain her policy front and back and still have charisma. My problem with Andrew Yang is outside of the thousand dollars a month sets. What else are we doing here? Okay, but I think he did a great job considering. I think he had probably my favorite closing speech tonight um, because he kind of set a tone. Even the way they promote these debates. It's like a reality show. He's absolutely right. It's a production. They got on makeup because Cory Booker was painted for the guards tonight. Okay? They got on makeup. And he's right. Why was the talking point is he didn't have a tie versus his policies? Even though he didn't say much about policies. But why is the tie the question? You know? Um, so that's that's my beef for him. But I think he did a, a great job notwithstanding. Um, Cory Booker. Cory Booker did not do a bad job tonight. I think it was a good outing for him. I think he went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Joe Biden in a way that Kamala really didn't this time. She tried to, but she ain't had a juice. But Cory, he let, uh, you know, I don't know his sexuality, but he definitely let his inner queen come out tonight, honey. Okay? Because that is, to me, the exchange with him and Joe Biden, that might have been the exchange of the night. Like, when they started reading each other rockets, and he's like, I'm surprised you even want to go here. All in the Kool-Aid and you don't know the flavor, bitch. I'm like, oh, okay. They giving, they, him and Joe is with the shits tonight, okay? I gagged. That was an exchange, honey. Like, Joe read him. He read that bucket, but Booker came right back. I get it. When you make a political audience go, ooh, bitch, you're doing something. Okay? Um, so I think for Joe, for Cory Booker, it reinvigorated him for me. It, it's like, oh, okay, it's Cory Booker. Um, I think that Gillibrand, even though, like I said, online, she did look like she saw Murray K out her trunk um, tonight, but I think it was a good night for her. And here's why. The first debate um, that they did, the one that was, I think that was NBC or CBS, she, her voice was so loud and she was screaming and screeching that I tuned her out within the first 20 minutes. So I can't tell you outside of those first 20 minutes what the fuck Chris, Kirsten Gillibrand's plan was. But tonight, I really liked how she presented. She wasn't yelling, but she was still assertive. She managed to get some of her points across where I could actually understand them. And she just appeared overall more likable tonight. Because the first debate, I was like, I'm not here for this bitch. I'm, I can't do it. But tonight, she did a, a, a great job um, for her, um, if, I, if I'm being honest. Jay Inslee, Jay Inslee to me is very classy. Um, I did research his record and what he be saying is true. He, he's done those things. Um, I think his strong points, what I, what I like about Jay Inslee as a candidate is he's about the overall moving forward of the United States as a society in the country as it pertains to the human experience. Like when he talked, like you can tell clearly because his environmental, um, when, when they started talking about the environment, fossil fuels, climate change, things like that, he really went in. Like, that's definitely, like, so, even though I don't, I know he's not going to get the nomination, I think when they assign those environmental positions or cabinet position, even though he's the governor, I think Jay Inslee needs to be in the conversation for that because he clearly understands it, he's passionate about it, and I think he'd do a phenomenal job on that. Um, de Blasio... Go home, niece. Go home. It like go home. It's not it's not it's not gonna happen. Stop trying to make fetch happen. You're not even like some of these people I'll be like, uh I can see it. I just can't see it. I 
I, I just can't see it. He started off aggressive. Okay. He started off aggressive. And I get that, but it's just like when you're coming from a city and a state rather where you're already under fire for how you're handling a situation with policing and killing a private citizen, you don't need to come off aggressive like that, bitch. You need to be America's best friend, the boy next door. You need to be Wilson on home improvement, bitch. You need to be behind the fence giving us nice little quotes and listening to us cry. Instead, you came out like General Hatton, bitch, and that's just not the way that you need to go. It's, it's just it's just not. Um, Julian Castro, I like him. I like Julian Castro. The problem is, is it enough? Um, Julian Castro is to me, oh, yeah, the first night it was Pete Buttigieg and Be Beto O'Rourke. See how time, life comes at you fast. I should have remembered that Beto O'Rourke and Pete Buttigieg was in the first debate, but I didn't. And that's concerning. That's concerning. Okay. Um, but to me, Julian Castro is kind of in that same, same boat as, as, as Blue Jazz in the sense that what he says, I like. I'm not against it at all. But it's like, are you present? Like, is it enough? Are you the type of candidate that can stand on the debate stage and argue policy, debate, and refocus the country against Donald Trump on live television. And I'm not confident that he can do that, if I'm being honest, because that's what it's going to come down to. Um, Bennett, Bennett. He comes across as an ambient user. I'm sorry. Like, he made his opening statement, and it was like literally crickets when he was finished. Like, everybody at least got a little, a little, even if it was a, a little tap. It was literally crickets after he made his, his, um, you know, his speech. Like, ben, like Bennett, I don't even know why he's there. Like, I, I, I don't know why he's there. I, I just don't. Um, to me, that's one of those people that honestly, you're taking up a space. Quite frankly. Um, Tulsi Gabbard. Tulsi Gabbard, like I said, she did a great job against um, Kamala. That was definitely one of the night's biggest wig snatching, so I'll give her that. But outside of that, um, I don't live. Um, there's something off about her, and I, I, I just can't get with it. Um, who else was on that stage tonight? I think we covered about everybody. Now, I'm going to go over who I think actually has a fucking chance of who, who, who really... You know, it's like, girl, you wasting time and people's money. I think for me, the people that are still in the running, of course, Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren. Um, Buddha Judge. <sighs> yeah. Marianne Williamson might stick around just because she's just kooky enough and people like her just enough. I think the curiosity piece and how she speaks will keep her around for a little bit longer. Beto O'Rourke, you're done. Beto O'Rourke is a classic example of when you believe your own hype. I feel like Beto O'Rourke should have stayed local. You should have kept your Senate position or whatever position you was in. Stayed to that. Done that. And you probably would have been better. So some people got to cook a little bit longer. And I think Beto... Um, much like Martin O'Malley in the 2016 um, election kind of put the cart before the horse and he wasn't really prepared for this stage. And I think him having celebrities support him because Texas is an important state and he got all that money for, the, for that election made him believe that he was actually more qualified 
for the big national stage than he actually was. And it's enough. It's like he's just in a wash. Um, but from night one, I think, yeah, definitely. Bernie and Elizabeth ready for war. They ready. That's just the bottom line. Night two, which to me has the most still active possibilities and contenders, of course, Joe Biden. Um, the thing with Joe Biden is this, and Cory Booker, which is why I think Cory had a, a, actually a good night tonight, is he brought up something interesting. Joe Biden, and it's smart, I don't blame him for doing it, he cherry picks um, when he wants to invoke Obama. He invokes Obama when it's a race issue, when it's a um, uh, why he got elected issue. He does not invoke Obama when it comes to immigration. I noticed that because Obama did have some immigration issues. Now, granted, it wasn't nowhere near like this. He wasn't putting kids in cages and shit, but he did de deport a lot of motherfuckers. Um, and I, me personally, I don't think that's a bad thing. Like, the thing is, everybody I noticed in this debate, in these debates, tiptoed over decriminalizing illegally crossing the border. Border. If you come and you seek asylum, I think there should be a path for that, and you should be able to do that. But if you're not seeking asylum, and you just, like, because as a United States citizen, we can't even go in the can. Like, motherfucker, we gotta have a passport. They kicking our ass out. We can't just walk up in Canada. That's just not how it works. And I'm just being honest. I, I, I think what's happening at that border is terrible. No ch child should be in cages. And we should not be picking and choosing which people from which countries should be able to come over here. But I do think that it needs to be an order to that. And I do think that if you illegally cross the border, that's illegal. So that's like, I mean, it is. Um, I think that they, they danced around that. A lot because they don't want to appear insensitive, which I get because how Donald, what Donald did was take something and he made it something, something that was one thing and totally transformed it into something else. Okay, just totally. And that's why we're in the mess that we're in. Um, but, but that, that's my issue, um, with that, with that piece of it. I think that, um, he, he picks and chooses when he wants to use Obama to his benefit. And that's a problem for me. Um, on the healthcare issue, because they spent a lot of time on healthcare. And I feel like this, as a person that does have private healthcare, I do have good health insurance for what it can be in America. I have good dental. I like my insurance. I don't know what Medicaid for all is going to look like at this time. I think it should be offered. But I'm very much on the fence, and this is just my personal opinion. Yes, everybody should get health care. But if I do have private insurance that works for me, that they take out of my check every two weeks, that, I'm, that actually is benefiting me, I should be able to keep that. I should not because there's this universal health plan, have to get rid of my insurance and join yours just because that's the case. I think I should still be able to keep my 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 plan. That's my personal opinion. I think everybody should have the right to health care. I totally, absolutely agree to that. I had Obamacare before I got in the situation that I'm in now. So I totally agree. Obamacare did help me to a certain degree. But I don't think that people should not be able to have the shit. If you got your Blue Cross Blue Shield and your Sigma and it's working for you, bitch, and you like it, you should be able to do that. Um, so that was interesting to me. Um, I, I noticed, and I, I made a joke about this yesterday, but they spent a lot of time, and, and I'm speaking to my single folks, my people who are single parents, um, my people who maybe don't have kids, or not in the family. It's been a lot of time talking about families, but for people like myself who do go out and vote, they don't really address me in these debates. A lot of these issues outside of the national crises issues, 
um, and environmental issues, they don't speak to me as a single person. As a single person, I get taxed the fuck out as a single person. I pay into Social Security that I'm probably at my, when I get to that age where I'm able to withdraw Social Security, I'm not going to be able to get it. That has to speak, like you're not speaking to that voter, um, in my in my opinion. So that's a concern for me. Um, I think as far as the environment issues, I, I do agree that, I, I, I agree with Inslee that I like where he's going with it a little bit more. I think if you're looking at Joe Biden as a candidate, you're looking at him as a stabilizer. You're not looking at him as an innovator. I think, and, and I think that's why the Democratic Party is really into him being the nominee because the DNC, as we learned last election cycle, they do have a preferred candidate. That's just a fact. I think they go with Biden because he can capture some of those middle America votes back from Trump that were lost in the last election. I think also too, Joe Biden is is Joe Biden is basically stopping the bleeding. He's not correcting the injury. If that makes sense. And which is fair because shit's gone to such hell that you need a stabilizer. So I understand that. Maybe this election isn't about innovation. Maybe it's about stabilizing the country. And if you're going with stabilizing the country, I totally understand why Joe Biden um is 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 the preferred candidate. I will say this. If I had to pick who I'm going to put on a debate stage against Donald Trump. And I said this before, and I'm going to just reiterate it because I feel like as a female candidate, she deserves it. Elizabeth Warren, if I'm looking at not based on who I think the straight white man in middle America going to vote for and all that bullshit, if I'm basing it strictly on policy planning, being able to answer the tough questions in detail, okay? Experience in actual government. Relatability. Charisma. I sound like I'm announcing the winner of RuPaul's Drag Race, right? And actually being able to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with Donald Trump, my number one choice is Elizabeth Warren. Sorry. But I also know the America that we live in. And the America that we live in is not going to vote an Elizabeth Warren in. Not even for the Democratic uh, nomination. And that's just facts. So here's what's going to happen, guys. It's going to come down to Bernie because he just has the numbers. Bert and support. Bernie, Elizabeth, Biden. Mm, jury's out on combo right now. Um, but Bernie, Elizabeth, Biden. That's your top three. The nominee is going to be Joe Biden. Um, and that's just what it is. And I'm not saying that because I think that he should be the nominee, but if I'm basing it on the DNC nomination, the votes in the primary election, who a large, large scale voting, Joe Biden will get the nomination. But I feel like if I'm basing everything on these last two nights, if I had to pick based on these debates, Elizabeth Warren is the most complete candidate out of everybody that was on those stages for the last two nights. Um, 
And like I said, these are not things that I necessarily agree with with Biden getting the nomination, but I know how America works. You know how America works. You know where this is going. Okay. Um, but overall, that's my, my view on the debates. I think we had a great time. Um, I think uh, I got some things out of it. I think for these next round of debates, I think they're going to be in Houston. Um, I want to hear more policy and I want to hear more detailed plans. I don't want to hear a lot of, you know, we have a president in office right now who is, we know that bitch. We talk about that every day. What the fuck you want to do? That's what I want to hear the next debate. But with that being said, make sure you follow me on Instagram at G-O-D-D-M, YouTube Secretary of Shade. Um, and you guys have a great night. Peace and love.